In Bergen County, New Jersey, only 10 miles separate St. Joe's and Bergen Catholic, two schools with a long and storied rivalry. And I should know, I'm a Green Knight alumni, class of 1999. My senior year, the football state final versus Bergen was the lead story on the front page, not the sports section, the entire newspaper, which is crazy when you consider the president was being impeached. Over 10,000 people filled Giant Stadium to watch it, and that was with no internet or social media. Bergen won that game, but uh, yeah, we don't need to talk about that. It doesn't matter if it's preseason, regular season, or the postseason. This rivalry is real. It doesn't matter what sport. The players and the fans will all get up for the game. That's why I decided to go inside this rivalry. To give everyone a behind-the-scenes look at what goes on in a Bergen Joes game. Are you ready? Pre-game activities begin at least an hour before games. Players arrive dressed impeccably, only to change immediately into their warm-up clothes for a series of pre-game exercises and stretches. Sticks are taped with absolute precision, while goalies work on their eye-hand coordination. And of course, the hockey tradition of a soccer kick-around. For the Green Knights, the start to the season has been a tough one, but a rivalry game against the hated Crusaders could be the spark they need to get their season back on track. A point their coach will emphasize in his pregame speech. So listen, it's been a tough week, right? About a tough 10 days maybe. A rivalry game like this, to bring out the best of you. Okay, so as much as our season turned for the worse a couple games ago, a win here today, we turn it right back where we need to be. There's questions going on, what's going on with St. Joe's right now, what's going on with their hockey team right now, nothing's going on. We hit a skid, our first skid in nine years. It's okay, all right? We just have to get through this. How we get through this is by scoring goals, getting dirty. So we're going to go after them as hard as we can and try to generate offense. Does everybody understand me? Get to the net, get on top of their goaltender, get our identity back of a dump and chase team, four checking hard, smart discipline, staying out of the box, taking care of the special teams. All right, play like you can, stick together, keep the energy level going. All right, do what you need to do to get a W tonight. You hear me? All right. All right. As the players make their way to the ice, the tension in the rink is literally in their face. A long pathway to the entrance puts former Bergen Catholic player Garrett Cotta face to face with his former classmates. Sportorama in Muncie. We welcome you in 
to the big one. St. Joe's taking on Burton Catholic here tonight. It should be an excellent matchup between the number 10 Green Knights and the number four Crusaders, two of the best teams in North Jersey high school hockey. Alongside James Cahill, Joe Basile with you here tonight. James, should be a fantastic matchup between these two teams. What are you looking to see out of both sides? Yeah, I mean, the rivalry speaks for itself here. Obviously, there's a lot of energy in the building. Uh, Bergen's missing his leading goal scorer in Johnny Mustard. Uh, I have the pleasure of coaching him. He's in COVID protocol and one of their top defensemen in Matt Desiderio. But coming right back at him, number 17, Antonio Arcaroli is a phenomenal player. Bryson Lago, number 22, a Brown commit. Uh, St. Joe's is really going to have to be able to embrace their speed and try to simplify the game to, uh, to eke out a win here. How big are those two losses for Burton Catholic? If you're St. Joe's, how do you, how do you try to attack a shorthanded Crusader team? So I think for, from the St. Joe's perspective, it's just business as usual. You know, you play the guys in front of you. Just moments before the game will start, the national anthem offers perspective amid the rising tension on the ice. We are seconds away from puck drop here. The referees take their positions. It'll be Hughes for Bergen and Hilliard for St. Joe's. Hughes wins the draw back to Lago. He feeds Arcaroli down the wing and we are underway. Nice takeaway by Lago and he sends it back in. Really good pace to start here. Crusaders trying to keep it on their own end, but St. Joe's able to clear out towards center ice. Burton Catholic off to a 3-2-1 start to the season. 1-2-1 in Gordon Conference play. Outlet intercepted right in front of the blue line. Good play by the defenseman there to break up that, that shorthand rush. And the puck deflects up into the netting. Will send us down to a face-off. Like I said, good pace here to start this one. You can see a lot of energy, especially on the Burton Catholic side, coming out in this first minute. Yeah, I think uh, Coach Keo and Coach Cersei, really good coaches, I think that's what they want to do. They want to try and set the tone of the game, um, you know, and impose their will but uh, St. Joe's has done a good job of absorbing it so far. Well, there that was T.J. Bayer trying to chase that one down for St. Joe's. Controlled, whipping on the shot, Declan Quinn. Into the corner, controlled by Finn Sweeney and sent around for Bayer. Aggressive forecheck for Burton Catholic here in the early going. Centering try picked up by the Crusaders and sent ahead by Maglio. Great job by the St. Joe's D here, staying up, embracing the rush, and making uh, Burton Catholic own every entry into the zone. Down into the corner, hand is up for it to lead off side. And that'll bring a face up back outside the zone. They're gonna call that an intentional offside, so they're gonna bring it all the way down. Some chance maybe for St. Joe's to capitalize around his student section down on that end of the ice to start things off as well. Maybe helping them out a little bit on this attack. Kept in by Atwell. And eventually skated out. Tobin. And 
And on it once again, Ryan Tobin, the 5'8 senior from Pearl River, New York. Now the back for Both Brian teams Atwell. trying to change. Chance here, walking in Freitas. Sends around and St. Joe's will make a change. And we have our first save of the day as the stick got caught up in the net. And the glove save made by the keeper, Daniel Dmitrievsky. Great save there by Danny. He's a real athletic kid. Uh, plays the game really well. And uh, you know, the biggest thing for him is gonna be rebound control here. I always fear that as a goalie, you can't get to, get to your stick, you're just kind of helpless, but able to make that play. I think, I, I mean, I don't have it in front of me, but almost three minutes into the game, I think that was the first shot on goal. So kind of like the first round of a boxing match here, each team feeling each other out a little bit. A little bit of a three on one here. Nice check on the near side. Absolutely monster save by Ronsky there. Getting post to post on a little three on one rush. Really nicely done. Just like that, couple of shots going back and forth after the feeling out <laughs> process. Starting to get something going. Offensively, both teams trying to break through for that first goal of the game. You just feel the tension in this rivalry, even extending up into the stands. I, I, I love Heckling. the sick man element on both on both sides here. Good job to keep in for a moment by Lago. Up ahead for it. Hilliard fires the shot that goes wide right. And right back on it. Garoli. Around the back. And eventually comes back across the blue line, and that'll be offside. Just great speed on that skate completely around the ring. Yeah, wow. that's uh, that's Antonio Arcaroli to a T there. He's a he's a north south player with a bunch of speed, and actually on entry there, he's he could also shoot the puck. So uh, St. Joe's might have got away with one there that he decided to keep uh, keep the gun unloaded. You just tell such a dangerous player out there could really. Change the complexion, how things look. Yeah, he's gotten a couple of Division I hockey offers. Uh, still trying to figure it out. Try back to the middle, and the deflection went wide for Matt Hughes, one of the captains. Now St. Joe's breaking out the other way. Shane Tobin, down into the corner. Drops it back for Bayer. Collision behind the net, Bergen Catholic controlling. A good poke check that time by Brian Atwell to break that rush up. Great stick check there. And this time just covered up by Nick Ronsky. So important plays like that, like Atwell there for the D to stay up and kind of embrace that rush and make sure that they have to earn getting around him. Great stick check there, textbook. Couple of minutes gone in this one. Action going end to end. Burton Catholic and St. Joe's. The rivalry game in the Gordon Conference here tonight. Play it back across for the shot that goes wide. That was off the stick of Matthew Maglio. Rush for Chang was broken up in the shot and another save made by Dmitrievsky. Another good save by Danny. Danny's a kid I know well. He's one of those kids you root for. He's just a wholesome, great kid. And it is starting a big stage here tonight. The night pick giving them all they can handle over there on the draw. Shot from the blue line. Ends up skittering right from Dylan Stiles. St. Joe's captain, senior from Nyack, New York. Played ahead by Finn Sweeney. 
line change for the Knights. Here's Arcaroli. Nice move, fires the shot, and a stick save made. Off by Ronsky, and that's just what you're talking about. Off that entry, firing from far out, put it right on net. Exactly, yeah, he, and he loves to shoot it. A nice little uh, shift to gain entry into the zone there. Great save again by the goaltender. Couple of opportunities for Bergen Catholic over the last couple of minutes. Starting yes. to buzz a little on the offensive side. See what St. Joe's can do, at least to slow them down from a defensive perspective. Yeah, Coach Maherder's done a great job with these guys. They're very disciplined off their face-offs. You know, they don't make many mistakes. The head, here's Freitas down to the corner. Sitting there, shot comes in, another save made by Dmitrievsky. Way back high. Freitas lost it in the slot. Dump back in for Bergen Catholic, and they'll change personnel. I don't think Lago is too happy with that dump in there. He was looking to join the rock. Huge hit on the near side. How's Matthew Hughes? And an offside once again against Burton Catholic. It's only the third against the Crusaders, just losing track of where they are on the ice. Big offside there. Uh, Bryson, you know, the Brown commit, Division One, going to be a Division One hockey player. He's scary with puck on his stick entering the zone. Styles has it. Set up ahead by Sweeney. Big hit there. That was Bayer laying the hit. Very physical play here in this first period. Puck pinned down in the corner, eventually grabbed by Sweeney across the blue line. Chipped along, Sweeney got back on it, and cleared it out of the zone. Lifted out for Sweeney. Ooh, Chang giving chase. Malaysia. Atwell back on it. Head to Garrett Kata. Pass got through, the way down to the corner. Shot from long range, right into the catching glove of Ronsky as that was William Nicholas from the blue line for the Crusaders. Things get a little lopsided, at least shot-wise, here in the opening period. Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting. I think, uh, you know, Bergen to an extent here is, is taking the shoot from everywhere approach. I think Coach Maherder is trying to make an argument here that the draw should be coming outside because the D came down. Interesting position for me. Usually I'm coaching and yelling yeah. at referees, but I get to be <laughs> nice and agree with them here today. Yeah, no problems yeah. here, yeah. Perfect call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Takeaway. Here comes the shot and the save made in front. It was Hughes with the opportunity. Giblin. Hughes is a real hard-nosed player. Gives gives 100% everywhere he goes. Shot from Hilliard that time made for an easy save for Danny Dmitrievsky. Burton Catholic a chance to get some new personnel on. A little bit past the midway point in the first period. Still no score. Tried to walk him forward off the draw there, almost had it. Pass up ahead. 
Ooh, Six lost the stick. Robinson. This could be a problem here. Good defense to get back, and the whistle blows. Gonna have a penalty here. Our first penalty of the day. And heading off for St. Joe's, it's going to be Dylan Stiles, the senior captain. Got him for interference, I think, uh, when he was trying to get his stick back. He incidentally crashed into somebody. Interesting approach here by uh, Coach Keo, going with four forwards and one D on the power play here. I'm pretty sure Arcaroli doesn't know how to skate backwards, so this <laughs> might be a problem. So you're saying watch out for something shorthanded. <laughs> yes. Had a little trouble there. Comes across the blue line out of the zone. And Burton Catholic immediately has to come back and get back on side. Try and get their set break out. St. Joe's in your typical 1-1-2-4 one, one, check here. They're going to try and stop them on entry. Here's Arcaroli. Trying to get it back to the middle. Puck freed from his stick. Still Ooh, controlled by the Crusaders, and then a takeaway. Here's Bayer walking in short-handed, and he scores! Five holes. And just like that, we got St. Joe's takes the first lead of the game. Kata tucks that home five hole. Little bit of a uh, interesting move on the breakaway, but St. Joe's got their work cut out too. They got to remember they got a minute 23 left to kill here. Well, you called it, said look out for the shorthanded, and there it was. Garrett Kata, his fourth goal of the season. Put St. Joe's up one nothing here in the first period. Looks like more of a regular set here with 2D for Bergen. Arcaroli moves from the back end back up front. Tried to tuck that in near side. So now Bergen Catholic playing with a little something extra. Trailing one nothing but on the power play for another 52 seconds. They probably want a quarterback this off a of Lago. Really, really good power play defenseman. Shot from Hughes, saved in front, rebound, try, ends up going wide. Great job by the goaltender, even better job by the D there, protecting that puck out front and shedding it to the wall. Hughes again. 18 seconds left on the power play. Gets it back, fires from the right circle, and a save made by Ronsky. Big glove save. Hughes had that puck coming down Broadway there, but he couldn't settle it down. It was rolling on him a little bit. Still 13 seconds left on the penalty. And Burton Catholic answered the shorthanded goal. The face-off controlled by St. Joe's. And around the sideboards and eventually picked up by Declan Quinn. Penalty time is over, back to even strength. Great job on the kill there by St. Joe's. Here's Hilliard. Lost an edge, stayed on the puck momentarily, but eventually cleared out to center. Great discipline by Forsetto there on the change. Almost got caught. Too many men with the puck coming. Three on two rush here. Lago. Pass broken up. Sent in from center ice. Bronski caught it and just held on to it until the whistle blows. Inside four minutes left to go. Here in the opening period, what a fun one it's been so far. 
Yeah, for a lot of these guys, this is uh, their second game of the day, having played with their travel teams earlier. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, who can hold up throughout uh, all three periods here. I'd imagine the toll, the stamina that you gotta have to play a couple of intense games. Way back to Great the middle. Great centering pass there. I was looking for Frisetto. Just couldn't get on it. Freitas. Dropped back near side, picked up by Dylan Stiles. Down, got <laughs> caught up in the referee. Hazard of the job, puck to the back of the head. Yeah, rub some ice on it. Icing will be waved, it's on net. Whoa. Nearly a dangerous move as Jacob Carver is taken away. See, trying to seal off. Four man scrum behind the net for it. They're out of the zone, controlled by the Green Knights. St. Joe's making the change. And the student section just getting on Bergen Catholic for every slight miscue. And another icing call going against Bergen Catholic. Or not icing, offside. <laughs> Looks like, you know, for two schools that are so close to each other, St. Joe's fan base is definitely outnumbering the uh, Bergen Catholic fan base here. Ooh, big open ice hit. Laid out by Christian Gallagher. Working in, shot, save, Ronsky, follow up, sitting in the crease, and the net comes off the moorings and play stops. A little, Almost a huge opportunity for Burton Catholic. A little extracurricular activity there that you would expect uh, after a whistle in a big rivalry game. Andrew Chiarello, I got to tell you, got away with one in the neutral zone here. That was a big slash. Ref didn't see it. Lucky for St. Joe's, we're still five on five. Final two minutes of the first period, a one nothing lead for St. Joe's. Credit the shorthanded goal to TJ Bayer. And speaking of extracurriculars, some more down in the corner. And another penalty coming up to close out this first period. Burton Catholic gonna have the man advantage. Yeah, it looks uh, Christian Gallagher's a little shaken up, took a big hit there in the corner. If you're going to get hit anywhere in this game, that corner is not where you want to be if you're Virgin <laughs> Catholic. Bad enough that you got to take a hit and then you got to hear from, uh, you know, 30 screaming fans dressed in their beachwear uh, attire. Well, it's the middle of January. What's not beachy about <laughs> Muncie, New York in January? Play it back across and a. Wicked One shot timer for there had the near side of the net. Good idea. This one cleared out of play. Yeah, Ronsky got caught a little bit on the four post, trying to get post to post there. Penalty time. 
presumably carrying over into the second period. If St. Joe's able to kill this off, the remaining 115 here in the first. Face off one back by Bergen Kaplan. Going with four forwards again here on the uh, power play. This time Robinson's on the back end in place of Arcaroli, who's moved back up front. Oh, the fans are correct. Wow, did Robinson get away with one there? Robinson back across. Crusaders get back on it. 40 seconds left to go in the first. Shot from the blue Ooh, line. Hits had the eyes. Backboards. Sitting there, follow up try. Puck still is still safe. loose, everyone just jamming at it. Loose in front of the net, and they score! Antonio Arcaroli ties it up in the final 30 seconds of the first period. I lost my sight line a little bit there, but it seemed as though the goalie had it covered, but I think the defenseman was on top of it, refs were all over it. Arcaroli uh, takes a shot on goal with uh, not just the goaltender, about three St. Joe's players in the net there. And Burton Catholic's been threatening a couple of times throughout the first period, and they finally break through right at the end. Time for another rush, though, for St. Joe's. 15 seconds left in the first. And this one deflects up and out of play. 15 seconds left in the first period. All tied at one. And... Bryson Lago, the assist on Arcaroli's power play goal. Flex off a of St. Joe's stick it out. 7.1 seconds left to go in the first. First period full of some action. Boy, if the second and third are anything like this one. Real aggressive game. I think, uh, you know, both coaching staffs are probably going to have the same thing in mind when this period ends here. You know, making sure their players can play with this level of emotion, you know, and, and for St. Joe's especially, they got to stay out of the box. Covered up with 1.4 left, so we'll bring it out for one more faceoff. St. Joe's going to pull Ronsky and... Bring an extra skater on. They say the mathematic science is 1.7 seconds is how is your window. That you can't physically score a goal off the draw inside of 1.7 seconds. I've never tested the theory, it's just what people <laughs> tell me. Well, let's see. <laughs> let's see if we got the time for it. It's our goalie taking the draw this time. Ooh. It's Thomas Hilliard. Deflected shot in. That almost found the back of the net in the last second there. And that'll do it for the opening period. Here tonight at Sportorama, it's Burton Catholic and St. Joe's tied at one. Power play goal and a shorthanded goal getting us special teams doing a lot of work out there tonight. It's been a fun one here in Muncie. Period number two coming up next. After a tight and tense opening 15 minutes, both teams quickly regroup for the second period. Just about ready for the start of the second period here at Sportorama in Muncie. Joe Vasile alongside James Cahill here tonight. All tied at one between St. Joe's and Bergen Catholic. Rivalry night and it, it well, certainly did not disappoint through the first 15 minutes. No, not at all. And, and you could see uh, near the end of the period, especially there, you know, a little bit of emotion coming in. Game's getting more and more physical as it goes on. And uh, it's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting second period here. You know, I think St. Joe's got to be happy with the way they're playing. Uh, Bergen, uh, you know, if I know Coach Keo and Coach Cersei, uh, you know, they're in there asking for a little extra effort uh, on, on the forecheck and a little bit more presence offensively. On the St. Joe's side, what's the message in the dressing room there during the intermission? Just kind of keep doing what you're doing on both ends? Yeah, I think, I think you know, 
St. Joe's is having a lot of success with a really simple game. A really simple approach, move the puck, get it deep, go play physical, and keep pushing them back and keep Bergen on their heels. And I think that approach will be uh, key here in the second as well. Goal scorers in the first. TJ Bayer for St. Joe's, shorthanded goal. It's six minutes left to go in the period. Then Antonio Arcaroli for Burton Catholic. Inside 30 seconds left to go in that first. The power play goal to net it up. How huge is that just for the momentum for the Crusaders heading into the second to know, all right, we got that goal, we're back to even. Now we can focus on playing hockey again. Yeah, I think they, they uh, needed that, especially giving up the shorthanded goal. A uh, little doubt starts creeping in, and, and uh, but they did a really, really good job, uh, you know, of answering back. Uh, but St. Joe's, on the other hand, doing a great job killing penalties. You know, they got the uh, the power play goal there, but you know they had to kill, I believe, three penalties in the period. So, uh, not not a bad job. Shots in the first period, 14-11 in favor of Burton Catholic. We're ready to go here in period number two. Thomas Hilliard taking the draw against Matthew Hughes. One back by the Crusaders. And they'll dump into the zone. Starting things off in the second period. This one sent in for the top of the circle. Chested down by Ronsky. Really smart play by Arcaroli there. He saw he had a net presence and just threw it at the net, hoping for the best. That's how the Crusaders scored their goal there in the first. Got a, a shot in, a rebound was sitting there and able to jab it home. Play back to the middle and this time covered up as net comes jarred loose and ends up stopping play. Danny Dimitrievsky saw a lot of action early on, a little bit less as the period went on and the Crusaders started to kind of control things on their side possession-wise. Yeah, they did. They did, and, you know, they play a very different, you know, they play more of a possession game uh, than St. Joe's does, and uh, it, it's going to be become real important that St. Joe's outman them to the puck. Kept in the zone for a second, and then eventually taken away. Ooh, Shot hit comes the cross in, bar. hits the post. Controlled by... The Crusaders, but poked out towards center ice. Bergen's got to get back on side. Big hit laid by Tobin. A little late, a little high, but in a rivalry game, who cares? <laughs> Officials certainly letting both teams play. Saw two penalties in the first. But a whole lot of physical play out of both ends. Just try back to the middle, and it ends up getting past Rossetto. Great backdoor look there, handcuffed him a little bit. Goes Smolik. Freed for the puck. Quick rush ahead, Kata fires in and it's one knocked down and again covered up by Dmitrievsky. And some jawing going after the play. Kind of surprised he's taking them both there. You know, by the definition of a rivalry game, you know, a little, little headbutt. Never hurt anybody. <laughs> That's why they got helmets exactly. on, right? Exactly. Just a little love tap, but now St. Joe's going on their first power play of the game. Part. Keep it at even strength. Good takeaway by Hilliard. Fires the shot. The blocker save made. Great back check there coming the other way. And down on the backboards. Everyone jabbing at it, and eventually Connor Kelly comes away with it. Couldn't link the pass together. Hilliard gets on it in the corner, dropped it pass back. Picked up by Michael Chang, but eventually controlled by Bergen Catholic. 
Maglio. Back and forth we go. And St. Joe's is offsides. T.J. Bayer just got a little bit out in front of the puck that time. Yeah, hit him in the back of the skate and he couldn't find it. Otherwise, uh, bad break for St. Joe's because that's a two-on-one rush there. Bayer taking the draw against Hughes. I really like the start here for St. Joe's. Came out with a lot of energy. Seemed to really be moving, putting a lot of pressure on Bergen coming out of their own end. Here's Arcaroli on it. Shot that was blocked away. Finn Sweeney got himself in the middle of it. Follow up try. Wow. And another Three save by Ronsky. Big saves. Back to back to back to keep Burton Catholic off the board. Yeah, I think from a defensive aspect here, St. Joe's has got to do a better job of eliminating the second and third chances. There's only so much the goalie can do. Hilliard beaten to it down to the corner. Lago heads. Call that the old dead angle try by uh, Lago. I think he had what he wanted, but uh, just not a little execution. He was trying to go near side on the goaltender, but uh, good save by, by uh, Ronsky. Ronsky then able to cover up to stop play. The ferocious pace that we saw in the first period is kept up here into the second. Yeah, I think, and even, you know, the uh, the kind of feel-out period early on in the first is definitely way gone. A little bit more high risk, high reward here on both sides. Face off control, working in. Ooh. And they score! Alex Freschetto was behind the net, just jabbed it right in, and Burden Catholic takes a 2-1 lead. Near side wrap around there. Ronsky, you know, sort of cheating just a little bit to the four post, thinking he was going the other way, and uh, Frasetto saw it and tucked it home. He had just the smallest window to fit that one in past Ronsky. And now Burton Catholic playing from out in front. First time today they've been in the lead. Yeah, this changes things on the St. Joe side of things. Still trying to be very aggressive. Keep this puck in. Yeah, I think it's important for St. Joe's here. You know, it's all, there's a lot of hockey left to play. I don't know that they need to exactly change up what they're doing, you know. Shadow's outlet was deflected back across. And Joe's on it once again. For Frank Barone. Working inside. Hilliard had it rejected up at the net. Arcaroli. Freed from the puck by Styles. Really good job by Styles there. Oh, we got a little. Up ahead here's Hilliard. He's kind of forgotten about on the back side of that play. Centering try, no one home for St. Joe's. Really good shift by Perone there for St. Joe's. Made a couple of nice little backhand slips. The blue line, Styles. Sweeney couldn't quite get the pass cleanly, and Burton Catholic able to clear it back. Nothing worse than a rolling puck in the slot. Physical play down in the corner. And the penalty call down right in front of the St. Joe's student section. 
Yeah, glad involved. to see Gallagher for Burton Catholic back out there. He was the one shaking up a little bit in the first period. But I think the uh, the ref sensed the uh, motions here and, and doing a good job of making sure the game stays under control. Gallagher and Styles heading off. So we'll keep it five on five. Second time we've seen that. Here in the second period is Again, emotions continuing to ride high here in this rivalry game. Face off controlled by St. Joe's. Tapped ahead by Freitas. Ooh, big hit. Shane Tobin tried to lay a hit for St. Joe's. I knew I said I wasn't going to say anything about the refs, but I actually thought Bayer's hit was pretty clean there. Kept his hands down, just finished right through his chest. That's a tough one. So now both Bayer and Dylan Styles in the penalty box for St. Joe's and a power play opportunity for Burton Catholic once again. They're one for two with the extra man tonight. So they have given up the shorthanded goal, so maybe yeah, I think, uh, you know, huge momentum shift either way here. St. Joe's can uh, kill this off. They get a little bit of momentum. And then, obviously, if Bergen can finish on the power play here and take a two-goal lead, definitely shifts their way. Drop back, Lago. Tried to work behind the end line, lost his edge. St. Joe's not able to clear. And Freitas this time able to play it out to the neutral zone. Right to Hilliard off the boards, walking in with it shorthanded. What a and save. he's denied. Really Quick. good job by Danny staying home there, not falling for uh, the little backhand shift. And the puck again all the way back. Where it's played by Dmitrievsky. Halfway through the second period, 2-1 lead for Burden Catholic on the strength. Oh, uh, the Alex Rossetto goal. Arcaroli has it taken away. 40 seconds left on the penalty. Great play by Kata there. Really good stick check to kill him on entry. Crowd giving a little, the refs a little help there <laughs> on the offside call. A lot of fans wearing green calling off as the Crusaders caught again offside. 30 seconds left on the power play. Great call there by uh, St. Joe's JV coach Scott Donnelly making sure <laughs> the refs knew it was offside. Big shot block there. 15 seconds left in the penalty. Oh, Leia sends the it second in front. chance opportunity. And they get the tip, and Burton Catholic takes a 3-1 lead and celebrates right in front of the St. Joe's students. Ronsky made a great save on the first one there. Lost control of the rebound, and unmarked, he just banged it home. They almost, St. Joe's almost got there. I think there was about you know 15 seconds left in that penalty. So uh, they got their work cut out from here, but as they always say, two goal lead in hockey is the scariest lead. Always so heartbreaking. You come that close to killing off the penalty. A big goal this one sent in and Ronsky covers up. Yeah, other than and the little some more break extra down there. You know, St. Joe's did a great job on the kill, didn't give up much. Freitas and Hughes jawing at each other a little bit there. 
I'm told we have a bleep here, so we might be able to say what they <laughs> hear what they were saying. Officially, the goal is for Seto's second. As the whistle blew, and uh, just someone lost that edge underneath and fell straight down. Gavin Mangiarelli. Yeah, Mangiarelli blew a tire there, and the uh, the Bergen fans made sure he knew about it. Hilliard and Hughes taking a face off. Bergen Catholic now with that three to one advantage. Play it back to the middle, looking for number four, but Christian Gallagher lost the edge. And as St. Joseph's breaking out, penalty and a cross-checking penalty is gonna come out against St. Joe's. Such a shame, I didn't see what happened behind the play, but couldn't have come at a worse time. St. Joe's had a three on two rush coming in. And another power play opportunity for Burton Catholic. So now they've scored in each of their last two and a chance to just keep tacking on with these penalties. Yeah, Coach Maherder pleading his case right now. I think he's right. Yeah, I'm with you, partner. I, I didn't see. I wasn't looking down on that end of the ice. I was watching the rush up ahead. But there were two players down. Yeah, that might be the argument, you know, yeah. without having seen it. You know, maybe something happened behind the play there where maybe they should both go. Yeah. Patrick Freitas in the box for the next two minutes. St. Joe's once again on the penalty kill and a quick goal. It's Arcaroli this time, putting it away. Great look there to Arcaroli in front and uh, we call that a soft catch, quick release. It's what makes Antonio special. Pretty much the second that was on his stick, it was off in the back of the net. A minute and 10 seconds after the last goal, Burton Catholic takes a four to one lead as Arcaroli's got his second of the night. And they make St. Joe's pay immediately for the penalty. Hold them for offside. You know, yeah. I think St. Joe's obviously got to stay out of the box here, yeah. you know, to get back in this game. But it's interesting. I, You know, I don't really see their plays undisciplined. Yeah. You know, it's just an aggressive, hard hockey game, and you just got to make sure you're controlling where your hands are, make sure your hands don't get up, and you play five-on-five five hockey. Pretty even game, five-on-five. Five. Yeah, five-on-five, five, it's one nothing Bergen. <laughs> Penalties have loomed large in this one for St. Joe's. And meanwhile, St. Joe's hasn't had one power play yet today. Anytime out of Bergen players gone to the box. St. Joe's. Some for not Joe's with too, them. yeah. Just haven't had those opportunities. As a St. Joe's graduate, I might have to start giving the refs some uh, <laughs> some crap here. Floating back inside. We're looking for a little bit of help from Nicholas Frisetto, but this one sent all the way down into the net, so way off. Arcaroli lost a handle on it. Taken by Shane Tobin, drops it off for Bayer. Gets back on it, tried to send it ahead toward net, but eventually picked off. That was Max Wright getting back for Bergen Catholic. Arcaroli again, trying to get around his man. 
This time Similic. I have to giggle a little bit. Antonio Arcaroli played for me last year. We won a national championship together, him and Bryson Lago, and uh, he just fell down and made me laugh a little bit. <laughs> Untouched, by the way. Nobody around them. First he can't skate backwards, <laughs> now he's falling down. Ooh, real close to too many men there. Oh, again. I have to clean up the change when it's there. Someone's Coach lost Keo the sick of his. For the uh, slash. The way back down, losing the edge. Mark Pike. It's just loose down there, trying to get possession of the puck. Eventually, St. Joe's going to get on it. Hilliard lost it. Centering try. Bergen was there. The follow up, sitting in front. Turnaround, no good from Canna. Back to the middle again. And eventually around behind the net. Oh, a couple of huge opportunities for St. Joe's, but not able to put one away. And this one came Real across close. the blue line. St. Joe's offsides. Best offensive push there for St. Joe's in a while. Really good effort by everybody. Final three minutes of the second period. This has. Not been a good one for St. Joe's. Burton Catholic putting three goals away. Take a four to one lead. If the Green Knights, if they can put one away now, these final couple of minutes, that at least gives you a little bit of something yeah, going into the third period to build on. Four, it's a different game going into the third period, four two, if they can get one. Not for lack of effort. You know, St. Joe's gonna have to lead, uh, lean on their leadership a little bit here. Their captains, Bayer and Hilliard. Really good hockey players, lead the team in points. Those are the guys are gonna have to look to here. Gallagher in the corner. Got tied up for a second. St. Joe's player lost the glove. This one deflected along through traffic and up and out of play. Give the Crusaders credit, you know, it, like you said, the, the two goal lead always kind of that hardest one to hold because sometimes you, you sag back a little bit, but they've stayed aggressive while building this lead. Yeah, I think with, with the offensive pop they have, I don't, I don't see them sitting back too much. Bayer and Quinn on the face off, controlled by St. Joe's. Rung up ahead and into the Bergen Catholic bench. Bergen players hanging over the wall there. Got a much needed whistle because that was a <laughs> breakaway for St. Joe's if that stays in play. Hit the reset button on the face off and do it all again. Baron Quinn. Up for grabs controlled by Arcaroli. Hit on Styles. Trying to lift it around, controlled by the Crusaders. Nice hit taken up ahead. Oh, a big Simone, hit. Oh, my goodness. Smilovich might be a little shaken up on that one. Smilovich just took a humongous hit. Wow, See Bergen got away with one there. They were all side by about three feet. Right back on it. Grissetto drops it back. Chance inside, the shot blocked. Quinn was the trailer trying to get that one through. 45 seconds left to go in the second. Hilliard, backhand shot was saved. She was trying to stay on, but once again, Burton Gothic doing a good job of sealing off. This one just flung in towards net. Rebound comes for Hilliard, ringing inside. 
His shot no good, the whistle blows, the net once again off. Great job by Daniel there. We're just gonna stick calling him Daniel. I coach him as yeah. well. Nobody's trying to say his last name. <laughs> A little bit of a yard sale as he lost uh, a helmet, a blocker, the glove. 30 Saint seconds left to go. Yeah, St. Joe's getting a little bit more aggressive here. D's joining a little bit more, you know, trying to make a push here in the last 30. Bergen was able to put one in the back of the net. In the final 30 seconds of the first period, see if St. Joe's can retaliate here in the second. Hughes was sent out. Arcaroli took the draw for Bergen Catholic. Hilliard sent it back to the middle. Ends up coming off Bergen Catholic array. 15 seconds left. Pass ahead to Hughes. He gets taken down, centering try back to the middle and eventually picked up by Arcaroli with eight seconds. Still control, St. Joe's play without a stick. And the shot was off in time. Ends up going wide in the final seconds of the second period and now some more extracurriculars. We'll get this one sorted out heading into the third as Hughes had a little bit of a shove there underneath. We'll head back to the dressing room. It's a 4-1 Burton Catholic lead at the end of two periods. Yeah, I, you know, uh, I really like the way St. Joe's finished the period there. You know, obviously there was no quitting them. Uh, a lot of, probably their their most five-on-five -five chances in the last uh, five minutes there. Uh, Danny doing a great job, you know, standing on his head and net, you know. But that's what they're going to need to get, those, those rebound opportunities, those loose pucks. They're just going to have to dig and scratch and try and get, you know, what we call a dirty one here to uh, shift the momentum a little bit. 4-1 Bergen Catholic at the end of a two. Back with the third period next. Following a second period dominated by special teams, Green Knight goalie Nick Ronsky has a message for his teammates. Boys, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but it's all coming back to stupid penalties. You gotta do what the hell we have. Yeah. They scored three power three goals. They scored three power three goals. The one I should have had, but... Boys, we got one goal on the penalty kill. We get three even straight easy. Bring it in. Ronsky's message will soon be echoed by an unhappy coach Maherder. Okay. The shots are right now 27-22 down. We have six penalties, 12 minutes in the box, which is an entire period. You get in these game environments, there's energy coming out and it's gotta be positive, not negative. You're now getting tied up and they're talking tactics over there, getting tied up in that game and that's not the hockey game. Okay? Hot game's about scoring goals. You can't be disciplined enough to put the puck in the net and keep your mouth shut, stop taking bad penalties, then you're not going out there. <coughs> Three power play goals they scored. Dead even game. And now, what, what does that do to our lines, Pat? Get your head up and stop acting like you're down. What does it do to our lines? It messes them up, correct? Game plan out the window. 12 minutes of penalties again. There's no excuse for it. Let them trash talk. Let them say what they want to do. You stay disciplined. You got 15 minutes to get it back. Stay out of the box and match them shift for shift. You think about this. If they're out shooting you by five shots only, they had six power play opportunities, what does that tell you about the rest of the game? We're a better team. Exactly. Let's go, boys. Come on, right? Like, let's go. Go. Let's Stop go. going into the checks with your hands up high. Stop going with the cross check. Stop going with the extra activity after and play the game the right way. You got it? Throwing your hey. hands up and shit. Hey.
15 minutes, right? Yeah, let's battle. Let's battle, right? Man. Hey, does anyone think this team is really that good? We're good. Nah, We're good. Stay calm. With just one period left, both teams are ready to leave it all out on the ice. Because when it comes to a Berg and Joe's game, a victory is all that matters. Back at Sportorama in Muncie, getting ready for the start of the third period. It's Burton Catholic with a 4-1 lead over St. Joe's. Alongside James Cahill, Joe Vasile with you here tonight. It's a big period for St. Joe's. They gotta get off strong right out of the gate if they wanna have a chance to come back in this one. Yeah, agreed, and it's gonna take everything they got, but uh, I saw the guys as they were coming out. They look focused, they look ready. So expect a good period here. Down three goals going into the third. It just what's the message kind of going into this one to make sure that you stay focused and keep your energy in the right spot to try to spark a comeback? That's really going to be the key here, keeping the energy in the right spot. It's easy in a, in, in a high-tension game like this to lose your composure, but that's not going to help anybody. They got to they figure out a way to do it in between the whistles and uh, you know capitalize on any opportunity that they get. So a lot of tension in the last couple of minutes of the second period. On pretty much every whistle, there was somebody in somebody's face, a little bit of pushing, a little bit of shoving after plays. Yeah, and that's, you know, it's I expect more of that this period, but you got to stay disciplined. You know, keep your hands <laughs> to your side and make sure you don't go to the box, especially for St. Joe's, given, uh, you know, the success that the Bergen, the Bergen Catholic power play has had thus, thus far. Fresh sheet of ice out there. They brought the Zamboni out in between periods, so a little bit slick. We've already seen a couple of players not quite find their footing. Now walking forward, Thomas Hilliard inside, and it's denied right in front, and Hilliard just slams his stick on the backboard, clearly frustrated with that one. Uh, he wanted that one. He actually made a great move. He pulled it to his back end. He got Danny just an inch off. He had a little window to tuck it home, and, and uh, Danny actually made a great save. Some energy in the first minute and a half of this third period for St. Joe's. Pass intercepted, but once again controlled by Bergen. A little sloppy here for Bergen to start, you know. Maybe a little uh, too much confidence with the three goal lead. I was going to ask that kind of the, the flip side of that is now you, you know, you go into the third period with a three goal lead. You know, what are you saying to the team to make sure, like, hey, we can't let up, we can't let them get back in this one? You know, the, the interesting thing is I think I think the opposite of, you know, the composure, embrace the rivalry. Mm -hmm. As St. Joe's player lost an edge, ends up crashing into the net. It was Ryan Tobin knocked it loose. So you're saying you almost want to see Burton Catholic kind of come out and, and try to kind of flame things up and poke the bear a little bit, try and get St. Joe's a little bit too emotional and less focused on coming back in this one? Yeah, I think, you know, with this again, with the success of their power play being a little bit of an antagonist here might not be the worst thing in the world. Collected in the corner by Caro and sent back out. Styles dumped in. St. Joe's had to get themselves back on side. And Michael Chang sends one back to the middle, looking for the opportunity, chipping at it. And it comes up and perfect example there. Real casual by Bergen in their own end. Mm -hmm. You know, leads to what should have been an, uh, an easy breakout. You know, a, a, a legitimate scoring chance for St. Joe's. Some more troubles with the net, staying put. Puck to flex high into the neutral zone. 
Bouncing at center ice, picked up by Patrick Freitas. Back to the middle with the try, and it just evaded the stick of TJ Bayer. What a move by Freitas there, what a move. And then a penalty going against Bergen Catholic. First look we get at the St. Joe's power play here. It's about time. Max Wright going off for a hold. Of the five goals scored in this game, four of them have come on power plays. St. Joe's got their loan shorthanded back in the first period. Three power play goals for Bergen Catholic, including two in the second. Freitas back at the blue line. Cadden back to the middle, chipping at it. Bayer tried to find it pass, but eventually cleared out by Bergen Catholic. Bergen got another break there, net was off. Little chin music for Coach Cersei there on the bench. Always got to have heads up down there. 133 left on the penalty. As uh, got a couple of pucks out on the ice right now. Have to get one of those out of here. Play with both of them. That would be fun. Sounds like something you might see in a like an NHL hits video game. <laughs> Get a power up for two pucks at once. Hilliard. Styles. And this one deflects again into the Bergen Catholic bench. Styles played a really great game defensively. He just got a little bit handcuffed there. 118 left on the penalty. First chance with the man advantage for St. Joe's tonight. Draw controlled by Jose. There's Hilliard. Sent it inside. Bayer tried to feed it across, but beaten to it. Styles at the blue line. Fires one in on net that hits the back. And again, controlled by the Green Knights. Looking a little bit better, a little more continuity. Inside a minute left to go. Great You're shot on the by power Styles play. there. Got exactly what he wanted with the deflection. Walks in with the shot. Hilliard jabbing at the rebound. And this one's covered up. We've got the whistle that's blown things dead. As players continuing to fight after it. Mitrievsky covered it up. Hilliard continued to try to jab at it. Hilliard, the senior, he's been in a lot of these games, knew it was coming. Anytime you get that, that close to the goalie after a whistle, somebody's going to take a crack at you. All part of the game. 47 seconds left on the power play for St. Joe's. This would be a huge kill for Burton Catholic. Yeah, I'm really impressed with the St. Joe's power play thus far. You know, they're getting the chances they're looking for. Oh, we got another penalty coming up here, too. Going to be on Bergen, five on three. Give it to him. Good awareness there. You always, the quicker you give it to him, the quicker you get to that five on three set. So this, mm. could, this could really change the game here. They can get this in the next 30. You got to, you know, 10 minutes left to play in a two-goal hockey game. It's going to get real interesting down the stretch. And St. Joe's going to take this opportunity for a timeout. So they're going to have 37 seconds of a five on three. And then still there's going to be minute and a half or so on this second penalty. So a big opportunity here for St. Joe's to essentially be playing for three and a half minutes with an extra skater or two on the ice. And yeah. you just have to take advantage. Yeah, the key here is uh, they got they got to get the first one within that first 37 mm -hmm. seconds, you know, so that they can go on another power play. Uh, real smart decision here by uh, Coach Maherder. You know, he had the top unit out there for a mm -hmm. little bit, you know, the first minute and a half, and I think he wants to go with them again. So 
So what do you think you're drawing up for St. Joe's? Where do you want to see this kind of kind of play out? Let's assume you win the draw and, and end up controlling. So they got a, a, I'm pretty sure it would be quarterbacked off for Styles here. Styles got a really good shot from up top. Um, you know, my approach on a five on three is actually not really the top half of the rink. I like to attack the lower half mm -hmm. and try to get uh, passes across, get the goalie moving side to side. Hilliard plays it back for Styles. Moving it back and forth. Styles sends the shot, redirect Hilliard. Kata trying to collect. Burton Catholic gets back on the puck, but broken up for a moment. Eventually cleared out to the neutral zone, and St. Joe's has to reset. Skated in by Styles. Eight seconds left on the five on three. Save made in front on the try. First penalty time is over. It's a five on four now. Oh, Hilliard had the look he wanted there. A great little stick check by number seven on Bergen. Hughes coming back, two on one. They play it across and score. Max Wright ends up beating Nick Ronsky shorthanded. And it's a five to one lead for Bergen Catholic. Just a backbreaker for St. Joe's. Yeah, that one, that one hurt. That one hurt, you know, great power play sets on the on the uh, on the five on three. Hilliard attacking off the goal line, you know, just got a good little stick check and you know, Bergen did what they do and got up ice and attacked right away. And uh, that's a that's a big goal. That's a big goal shorthanded there. And instead of St. Joe's potentially making it a two-goal game, Bergen Catholic has made it a four-goal game. But still 105 left to go on the second penalty, so St. Joe's still on the power play. Brian Atwell's on it. Pass just got past Carmine Coro, and that'll go down for icing. Little out of reach for Coro there, up the far side. Yeah, you know, 53 seconds on the power play here. You get one, crazier things have happened. Still 9.20 left to go. Forty-five seconds left on the penalty. Coiro sends it in. Collected behind the net by Wright. Outlet ahead. Coming up on it, Hughes walking in shorthanded again. The shot to save made by Ronsky, and he covers up. Great save there by Ronsky, closing up the five hole. I think Hughes put it right where he wanted to because it looked like it was there, but a really good save. It's so dangerous, this Burton Catholic team <laughs> working shorthanded over the last really just minute up five to one inside nine minutes left to play Ryan Tobin Bergen Catholic just denying any entries for St. Joe's 10 seconds left on the penalty controlled by Carver sends it around the backboard Bayer's thrown several big hits in this game. Comes back out. We're back to even strength. Here's Arcaroli working ahead. And Burton Catholic was off sides. You know, it's funny. I, I look at these guys. You know, I'm a travel hockey coach. Mm -hmm. The argument over travel versus high school is an ongoing, ever going out argument. But this is what it's all about. All these kids work so hard away from the rink, being able to play in front of their peers in a rivalry game. It's really, really nice to see. Great environment. And like you said, a lot of these guys that played a travel game earlier in the day now playing this one, and you just see the effort, the, the energy, and the intensity. This tells you how much this one means to these guys out there. Even still, a four-goal game. Yeah, no one's pulling no any punches. St. Joe's, that's for sure. Styles. Oh. 
Whipped around in the corner. Connor Kelly trying to fight for it. Puck leaks out for Max Wright. Well, Burton Catholic came in ranked number four on the NJ.com poll. St. Joe's number 10. Looking at a chance to try to not only upseat a rival tonight, but work their way a little bit higher up in that. The power play really doing St. Joe's in tonight on both ends. Back to the middle. Open look, Ronsky with the save and the foul goes home. Batted home by Bryson Lago. It's a six to one lead for Bergen Catholic. Bryson enjoying uh, the uh, Bergen uh, fan section there. It was Nicholas Frisetto who had that first trace shot rather had kind of the open look. Ronsky made the save, but just bounded perfectly right to Lago. Yeah, nothing Ronsky could have done there. You know, it was, it was a direct pad. You know, he can't control the rebound there. Just wound up falling right on Lago's tape, and he did what Bryson does and, you know, finished out on the other end. Some of the St. Joe's students making their way out of the arena. Some are waving, some are doing more than waving to the Bergen Catholic student think section they might on still the way be out. Virtual. Let's hope all the boys are behaving themselves tonight. Might not have to be up early tomorrow. Once again, working in, play it across, and couldn't be batted home by Maglio. What a pass there by Lago. Six twenty left to play. St. Joe's back on the puck. I remember the intensity they came out with in this third period. Just really kind of struggling to recapture that as Burton Catholic put a couple away. Six unanswered goals in this one. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, 15 to 18 years old in a big rivalry game. Mm -hmm. Huge intentions coming in. Trailing by five, it's, it's, it's pretty easy for uh, to get deflated here. Kept in the zone by Styles, and he sends it in and scores from the blue line. A surprise shot by Dylan Styles, And that gets St. Joe's back on the board, makes it a 6-2 game. Sometimes you just need a little bit of puck luck. Danny, great kid, but he's going to hear about that one from me. That's one he should have had. Second of the season for Dylan Stiles. It almost looked like Dimitri, like he just didn't, didn't even realize it was coming in, whether it was screened and, and didn't quite see or, or what, but just a late reaction. Well, interestingly enough, he had a, a player who broke his stick that was coming right through his sight line and throwing his stick in the air. And uh, I, I think they thought that the puck got out of the zone, but a good clamp down by Stiles there and, and a great finish. So now down to a four goal lead for Bergen Catholic. 5.25 left to go. Crusaders back on it. Play left side, shot to flex off the blocker high into the net. And it'll come back down as Jacob Carver was looking for goal number seven for Bergen Catholic tonight. Carver again firing. This time just off target completely. Tobin. All due respect to him, but that wouldn't have been in, in, in a soccer net. Bear. Back across to Carver. Extended minutes here. Now Gallagher. Quinn feathered behind the net. It's Rocco Venezia. And a shot from Carver this time deflects high once again. 
up into the net behind the net and looks like so far out of play that there's a couple of fans looking to send it back over the net into the rink. 0 for 3 so far. That's a pretty long throw. Yeah. Uh, he quit. He just yeah. keep that one as a souvenir, sir. <laughs> Gurley played it down to the corner. Came back up for a shot. And that was Max Wright who ended up breaking his stick. Trying to go after that one. Hockey Gurley pairs, worst it. nightmare when that happens. They go for about 200 a pop nowadays. <laughs> Huge hit levied by Wright. Hughes had intercepted by Styles. Can Bergen Great work to get out of their the end? Line there. Back on it, Hughes. Back to the middle. Toe drag, and the shot goes high. Jammed ahead by Finn Sweeney. Back on it. Patrick Freitas, but a Quickly taken away. Skated back to safety by Lago. Sweeney goes and collects. 310 left to play in the game. 6-2. Bergen Catholic out in front. Three power play goals and a shorthanded goal for the Crusaders tonight. He displays it off the glass to Hilliard. Slams the brakes on, tried for the shot. Stick failed him. Loose in the high slot, eventually played by the Crusaders. Another great opportunity. Yeah, great push. Puck took a weird bounce. Sent on in for icing by Bergen Catholic. 2.36 left to go in this one. St. Joe's you know, still playing at 100% effort, trying. Keep that intensity up in the final couple of minutes. Looking for their first win. The Gordon Conference. Play back across, two and a half left. Sean Joyce caught a piece of that one by Mangarelli. Coiro. On to Kelly. Close to the middle, Gallagher ahead. Arcaroli with two minutes left. Tried to send it across. Couldn't quite get it on target and then net comes off once again. Yeah, interesting to uh, you know call out is is as uh, great as they are on the ice. You got players like uh, T.J. Bayer, who's uh, also the vice president of the student council. Uh, school tells me he single-handedly uh, cooked 200 sandwiches himself for a food bank and wow. really likes to give back to the community. That's awesome. Obviously, the great stuff that happens. Not only on the ice, but off in the classroom, in the community. Yeah, both schools have a great focus on, you know, making sure they're giving back to the community. A couple of big saves there by Ronsky, too. Chipped out by Mangarelli all the way down, and this will go for icing against St. Joe's with a minute 24 left to go. It's 1-1 one, one after one period, and Burton Catholic made its move middle part of the second. Three goals to go up 4-1 into the third. Remember, St. Joe's was trailing 4-1. They had that five on three. 
Bergen Catholic able to not only kill it off, but then get a shorthanded goal out of the whole thing. And yeah, you got to figure, you know, that's that's really the turning point of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, not being able to capitalize there. You know, it's been even hockey five on five throughout. So who knows what happens down the stretch if you get one there. Mm -hmm. And you're coming back. If you score there, then you're coming back with another power play with an opportunity to make it a one goal game down the stretch. And, you know, then you get guys gripping the stick a little tight and, you know, we'll see what happens. But couldn't get it done. They'll get other opportunities. Freitas sends it in front looking for the redirection. And to be Great save able to make by the Danny save. there. They had a net presence. He put his glove out in front, make sure made sure Hilliard didn't get a uh, deflection on that puck. 102 left to go. Draw one by Bergen Catholic. This Alex Frasetto has got two goals already, looking for the Hattie, and a save made by Ronsky. And again, the whistle blows as Frisetto was making a bid for his third goal of the game. Sweeney made a hell of a play there, uh, covering, finding that loose puck and making sure it got out. But I think uh, uh, Styles is going to go here. So another power play opportunity to finish the game here for uh, Bergen Catholic. And if I know them, uh, this won't be reserved. They're going to look to try and get another one. Main advantage with 50 seconds left to go. Got the top unit out there. Here's Arcaroli on out on the circle. Back to the blue line. Shot goes high from Will Nichols. 30 seconds left. Here's Nicholas again. Sends another one in, and the glove saved by Ronsky. Big save there. D coming right down Broadway. Nobody in front of him. And uh, Ronsky makes a big save. We've seen that lane open a couple of times on the power play for Bergen Catholic, and Ronsky able to make the save coming back across. Yeah, it's you know, for St. Joe's, they got to win those one on one battles on the wall and win the zone because that's what the far side's going to open up for them. Spinning around in the corner, Ethan Lasia plays it back to the blue line. Big hit. Back across, sitting in front, and they batted home, seven to two with 4.6 to go. A power play goal for Bergen Catholic, the icing on the cake in this one. Frasetto and Orcaroli both right there. So uh, I don't know who got it, but uh, I'm sure Antonio's gonna want the hat trick. And uh, Frasetto and Orcaroli, lifelong friends. They've mm -hmm. been around each other a long time. Uh, we'll, we'll see who, uh, who the refs gave it to. One of the two of them is coming up with a hat trick. And they do give it to Antonio Arcaroli, so a hat trick as time expires. The Burton Catholic Crusaders with a 7-2 victory tonight over St. Joe's. And it was, as we said a couple of times, James, a, just a game where the power plays, the penalties was eventually what did St. Joe's, and it was even hockey for most of the game, five on five. Yeah, I think, you know, for Coach Maherder, I don't think St. Joe's walks away from this game, you know, thinking that they can't beat Bergen. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be interesting, you know, obviously. I think they have Bergen County tournament coming up, obviously Gordon Cup playoffs. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to get to see a lot more of each other. And, uh, you know, both, both teams will make adjustments. Uh, you know, hopefully, COVID permitting, we'll have full lineups here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, a couple more good games uh, left to go this year. Tough, intense rivalry, rivalry game. A tough, intense rivalry game here tonight as Bergen Catholic takes down St. Joe's. Teams in the handshake lines right now. It was so intense, so many emotions out on the ice tonight. And just good sportsmanship right here at the end. Always like to see in a rivalry game, you know, good sportsmanship in the handshake. And uh, I can tell you one thing, uh, both teams are going to sleep well tonight. Absolutely. It has been a fun one here at Sportorama in Muncie. What a pleasure to bring this one here for you uh, tonight. So, for James Kale, I'm Joe Vasile. So long 
Final score one last time. It's Bergen Catholic 7, St. Joe's 2. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Okay, okay. So Bergen won this one. They played a strong game, and they deserve to win. To the victor goes the spoils. Right? We dubs! Dubs! Ah, let's go! That's a dubby! But remember, the thing about rivalries, there's always another game. <laughs>